be breaking the rules, there are two on this list that you might not even realize you're doing. Tourists, you're going to make mistakes in Japan. It's a land of intricate customs, exceptional food, and a transportation system that runs like clockwork. After almost a decade of traveling across Japan, I've made my share of uncommon mistakes that often go unmentioned. So here are 12 uncommon mistakes to be aware of. But before we start, subscribing and liking the video will really help the channel out and help me continue making more content like this. Mistake number 12 is related to food size. And no, I'm not talking about tiny portions. Yes, it's true that Japanese portions are mostly small in comparison to other countries, which is exactly why many people make this mistake when they visit Hiroshima. You might end up misjudging the site of Hiroshima style okonomiyaki also known as Hiroshima yaki. I 100% recommend that when you're in Hiroshima you check out the local take on okonomiyaki, a savory pancake loaded with many delicious ingredients. It's a must try but don't be fooled. These pancakes are not only delicious but they're also incredibly filling and from my experience a single okonomiyaki serving is often enough for two especially if you're also opting for some sort of starter. Have you experienced Hiroshima style okonomiyaki? Mistake number 11. Once again, it's related to food. Let it cool down. I was caught by surprise by some incredibly hot Japanese dishes. And no, I'm not talking about spice level, but rather tongue blistering heat. Yes, takoyaki, a famous dish in Osaka, and especially yaki shorompo, fried soup dumplings, are irresistible and sold in many street food markets across Japan. But they are often served steaming hot. Enthusiastic tourists like myself may find themselves with a burnt tongue if they're not careful. And that's exactly what happened to me on various occasions. Mainly because the trick is patience. Something I may not have, especially when the food looks so delicious. Let them cool down just a little bit or poke a hole to let the steam out before attempting a bite. Number 10, Shinjuku Station Labyrinth. Yep, maybe mentioned many times. In fact, I'd say that getting lost in Shinjuku Station is a rite of passage. So, the story goes a little bit like this. If you are planning to meet friends at Shinjuku Station, think again. This station is a maze with around 200 exits that can confuse even the locals. Instead, choose a specific location outside of an exit number or a nearby landmark to meet up and always have a backup plan like a messaging app to reconnect if you're lost. On one of my first trips to Japan, I naively asked a friend to meet me at Shinjuku Station. To this day, I still don't know where they are. Actually, one of my top tips is to make sure that you have a data connection to help you navigate, translate or stay in contact. Pocket Wi-Fi or data SIM will really help you unlock Japan. So please consider using my affiliate link in the video description or the QR code. You'll receive a trusted product and I'll receive a small commission at no additional cost to you. And best of all, you'll be helping out the channel. In addition, if you want to book Japan attraction tickets, guides and even Shinkansen trains in advance, then use Klook, which has many Japan offerings in one place using my affiliate link will help the channel out and you'll be purchasing the tickets that you are likely going to purchase anyway okay number nine seasonal sensibilities japan is a country that celebrates the seasons from sakura in spring to koyo in autumn tourists often overlook this missing out on seasonal festivals foods and activities that offer a genuine taste of Japanese culture. So when you do plan your trip, do so with the seasons in mind to fully embrace the country's temporal beauty. For me, winter is about illuminations and snowy onsen and amezake, spring for sakura and sakura flavored everything and seasonal fruits, summer for incredible fireworks and cultural events, and autumn for the beautiful colors, sweet potatoes and chestnuts. <laughs> Number eight, striking the culinary balance. Yes, Japan's culinary scene can be expensive, but it's also known for its lunch deals. Don't stick to just konbini food. After all, Japan is known for its incredible food options. And one way to keep costs down is by eating your main meal at lunchtime, where there are usually cost-saving set menus and using the savings to enjoy high-end cuisine in the evening. The trick is to strike a balance. Not everything has to be super expensive. Not everything needs to be budget. I find that sometimes tourists find it hard to strike that balance. Number seven, 
don't break the rules. Wait, I know you're not going to break the rules on purpose, but did you know that not carrying your passport can be more than just an inconvenience? It's a legal requirement for tourists to have their identification on them at all times. So avoid any issues with law enforcement by keeping it with you. You really don't want to spoil your day by being escorted to your hotel by a police officer and being potentially interrogated. Not happened to me, but I've seen it happen before. Plus, don't forget that having your passport handy will mean access to tax free shopping for those gadgets or that Don Quixote shopping haul. <laughs> Number six, the capsule hotel era. Capsule hotels might be very Japanese, but also an era that some tourists might commit. Firstly, they aren't always a budget option. Sometimes business hotels offer better deals and more importantly, more privacy. So it's important to compare prices and amenities to find the best fit for your wallet and your comfort. But other than that, planning a whole trip to Japan and only staying at capsule hotels might not be for everyone. An experience that might be worth trying out for a short stay, but maybe not in the long run. Number five, the nuance of yes in Japan. <laughs> yes doesn't always mean agreement. It can be a polite acknowledgement without a commitment. So pay close attention to nonverbal cues to understand the true message that's being conveyed. For example, a nod or a hi, which means yes, might simply mean I hear you rather than I agree with you. So this is where body language, tone of voice and the context of the conversation is so important. Number four, punctuality is paramount. The Japanese transport system is famed for its punctuality. Miss a train or a bus and there might not be another for some time. Always plan to be early as being just in time can sometimes mean being too late. I once went on a boat trip to a remote gorge and I was told to be at the pier at 4.54. Yes, 54. Very specific. And to cut the story short, I arrived 10 seconds late and they had departed without me but I ended up panicking and waving my arms, jumping up and down and I caught their attention and they thankfully returned for me. So yeah, punctuality, don't make that mistake. Number three, shutter sound requirements. Tourists are often surprised to learn that in Japan, it's a legal requirement for phone cameras to make a shutter sound. This is to protect privacy and prevent covert photography. So you might actually be breaking the rules every time you take a photo if you haven't turned the shutter sound on whilst you're in Japan. Respect the culture of privacy when snapping photos. And number two, Jaywalking, just don't do it. Jaywalking is a big no-no. Pedestrians in Japan wait for the signal even if the road is clear. Follow suit to avoid fines or even worse, endangering yourself and others. It can be frustrating as a tourist waiting at a stop sign when there is clearly no traffic, but you could potentially end up in trouble if you don't abide. And after all, as I always say, look around you and try to fit in, do as the locals do. And lastly, Number one, Suica is not the all-powerful card it's set out to be yet. There are Suica card limitations. Whilst the Suica card and many comparable IC cards are incredibly convenient for city trains and buses, it doesn't work everywhere in Japan. There are rural places where it just simply won't function or even cities like Kanazawa where only part of the bus network is covered. My recommendation is to do your research or if you're attempting to use an IC card on a bus for example and it won't work, then ask if a day pass is available to help you remain coin free and make your trip in and out of public transportation as smooth as possible. This one can really catch tourists out. It's always important to remember to carry additional cash just in case. Many of these are mistakes that I've made and I find a lot of videos simply don't mention too much of. By steering clear of these common tourist mistakes, you'll blend in more with the locals and ensure a smoother, more enjoyable journey through Japan. Please help out other viewers by sharing some of your stories and tips in the comment section and consider subscribing to help the channel grow. It really does take multiple hours to put these videos together. And did you know that I have a weekly Sunday live stream where I try to answer your upcoming Japan travel questions? Check it out. For further support, check out my Patreon, donate on Super Thanks or PayPal. There's always my second channel, The Happy Gaijin, for more casual live streams and vlogs. All links can be found on my website. And if you are a Spanish speaker and have watched all the way to the end, empezado un canal nuevo y un Instagram en español. I recently started a Spanish language YouTube and Instagram account. Till next time, stay positive and be a happy gaijin. Safe travels.